hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome to the multiple choice question video of the Evidence for Evolution chapter. What we'll do in this video is cover all the past HC exam questions from 2001 to 2010. That be a seven questions all up. What I'll do in a second, I'll put up the first question. I'll read the question and then give you five seconds to pause the video. Once you've paused the video, attempt the question and then press play when you're ready. First question is, fossil evidence indicates that the Australian environment in the past has supported a large and diverse range of megafauna. The megafauna has now been displaced by a variety of smaller marsupials. What is the best explanation for this? A. Marsupial, small marsupials coped with climate change and survived. B. Large marsupials reduced in size so as to cope better with climate change. C. A meteorite collision caused a mass extinction of the megafauna. D. Introduced plant species were not suitable food for the megafauna. When you ready, press pause and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer for this one was A. The reason why D was incorrect is because introduced species, plant species, they only came in the most of them came in the 1900s when the British came to Australia. So this was, I mean, the, when it comes to megafauna, this was a lot earlier, so beforehand. So we don't have any evidence that introduced plant species caused problems for the megafauna. Same with meteorites. We have no evidence of a meteorite collision, so we don't know about that. And the reason why B was wrong is because it says large marsupials reduced in size as to cope better with climate change. That's almost indicating that they, whilst they were still alive, they decided they would become smaller so that they would cope better with climate change. And we know that evolution doesn't just happen, you know, the, the marsupials can't just decide they want to be reduced in size. They have to do it for evolution. So therefore, A is the most correct one because smaller marsupials cope with climate change and survived. This is the most correct one. Next question is, this is a poem I'm reading here. Oh, thou prehistoric link, kin to beaver, rooster, skink, dunk, mole, adder, monkey, fox, paleozoic paradox from Harry Burrell. Question is, which technique would you be used to measure the extent of the evolutionary relationship between the platypus and the eight other animals mentioned in the poem? A, identifying fossils that are transitional between the platypus and the animals listed. B, Sampling DNA and, and identifying similarities between the animals listed. C. Comparing the anatomical features of each animal. Or D. Comparing embryos of each animal. When you ready, pause the video and attend the question. Welcome back. In this case, the correct one is B. The reason why A is incorrect is because there are necessarily um, transitional fossils for all species, so we can't rely on transitional fossils to give us any good evidence. D is C is correct because comparing anatomical features can be useful in general, but some of them will have very similar features, but maybe different DNA. So we can't use anatomical features to make it the best distinction in terms of evolutionary relationships between species. We can use it, but it won't be the best. And same thing with comparing the embryos. So most of the embryos will actually look at there. Most of them are animals. Most of them are mammals or birds. So most of their actual embryos will look quite similar. So we can't really use embryos to check how close they are related. But we can use the sampling of DNA and identifying similarities. But this is the biochemistry, so we can check out how they similar they are or how different they are according to their DNA. So B is correct. Next question is, the two animals pictured are not closely related. They burrow and live most of their life on the ground. The Australian marsupial mole is this one, and the European placental mole is this one. Which of the following explains how these two animals can be used to illustrate Darwin's and Wallace's theory of evolution? A. They demonstrate comparative anatomy. B. They must have evolved from a common ancestor. C. They demonstrate that an organism can change its characteristics to suit the current environment. Or D. They have evolved similar structures in response to similar environmental conditions. And ready, pause the video. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is D. 
the reason why the other ones were correct is they demonstrate comparative anatomy. That's not in any way a evidence for evolution in this case. They must have evolved from common ancestor. It's wrong because it says they're actually quite, they're not closely related. So they're quite different. So it might not have evolved from common ancestor. C is incorrect because it says they it demonstrates the organism can change its characteristics. It can't just change its characteristics. It can do so for evolution, but it can't just decide it wants to be different. So C is correct. The e, C is wrong. And D is correct because it says they have evolved similar structures in response to similar environmental conditions. This was an example of convergent evolution, where they might have similar conditions, which is why they will evolve into similar similar things. So, for example, these might help them burrow, and they might be both in environments which might be different, but yet quite similar. So they need to have those kind of crawly things to burrow. So D is correct. Next question. Evolutionary relationships between the vertebrates can be determined by comparing the amino acid sequence of human hemoglobin with the hemoglobin of other vertebrates. Which are which area which area of study collects this type of evidence to support the theory of evolution? A biochemistry, B biogeography, C comparative anatomy, D comparative embryology. Ready? Pause the video. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is A. The reason why biochemistry is correct is because biochemistry has to do with DNA sequencing, and that's what we just mentioned here with the hemoglobin. Biogeography is false. It has to do with checking how fossils are similar on different continents. Biogeography is not what was mentioned. Comparative anatomy is also false. It's looking different at structures which are similar. Not DNA which is similar, but structures in terms of maybe the hands or the legs. Comparative embryology was false because that's to do with looking at similar embryos. But embryos aren't DNA, so that was also false. Next question. The effectiveness of a new insecticide was tested on a large population of mosquitoes over a number of breeding cycles. At first, the population of mosquitoes was reduced dramatically by the use of insecticides. After a number of breeding cycles, the population then began to increase until the insecticides appeared to have little effect. How would Darwin Wallace's theory of evolution by natural selection explain these observations? A. Some of the original population were isolated from the insecticides as a control group. B. Some of the original population had already reproduced before the insecticide was used. C. Some of the original population were resistant to insecticides and passed on to a later offspring. D. Some of the original population adapted to the insecticides and survived to produce offspring. Are you ready? Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is something. Is this one? Wait, actually, sorry. C. That's just, I don't know why, but I had brain freeze. Um, so the reason why B, C was correct and A was, and the other ones were incorrect is A and B. So they talk about if they, if they were somehow luckily isolated or they reproduced beforehand. Both those examples are just general random examples that have nothing to do with evolution itself. So both A and B would have been false. The reason why D would have been false is because it says some original population adapted, so they adapted to the insecticide. That's almost suggesting again that they adapted whilst they were in contact with it. That doesn't work. So if, if they are, they can't adapt after they're already born. The adaption usually happens if there's a mutation in the actual um, egg, not afterwards. So in this case, this doesn't work. C is correct. So some of them were resistant. They survived and then passed on their offspring. And so C is correct. Next one. What finding from the study of comparative embryology supports the theory of evolution? A. Embryos are easily fossilized. B. The embryos of fish and mammals look very similar. C. The dominant chromosomes are passed on to the embryos. D. Mutation is gametes. Mutation in gametes is common and this leads to different embryos. So when you're ready, pause the video. In this case, the correct answer is B. Embryos are easily fossilized. It's just, yeah, it's just, I mean, embryos don't fossilize easily at all. Even if they were, that wouldn't be important. C, the dominant chromosomes are passed on to chromosomes. Embryos, again, that is completely irrelevant for this question. D, 
the mutation of gametes common and this leads to different embryos. Again, completely random and not related to the question. So the embryos of fish and mammals are very similar. That's what embryo comparative embryology is all about. So B is correct. Last one. Which of the following provides evidence that supports the theory of evolution? A. Clones. B. Punnett squares. C. The fossil record. D. The DNA double helix. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is C. Clones, again, has nothing to do with supporting the theory of evolution. Fun and squares, we can use it to figure out Mendel's ratios, but it's not in itself a evidence for evolution. And while the DNA itself can be used in biochemistry, the DNA double helix, which is just the fact that DNA has these double helixes structure, it itself is not a evidence. So that is also false. The correct answer is the fossil record, because we can use the fossil record to see how old things are, and make evolutionary relationships. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.